must get to my family. What if he don't come back? All right, that was a clip from Emancipation, a film that portrays the brutality of slavery, and it's based on the real-life story of a formerly enslaved man known as Whipped Peter. Joining me now with his review is Richard Krauss. So, Richard, this has a really interesting backstory, mm -hmm. also of interest, of course. It's Will Smith's first film out since that infamous slap at the Academy Awards. Yeah, this will be a test, I think, of the uh, do you judge the art and not the artist mm. uh, for a lot of people. On Twitter, I'm seeing a great many people saying, absolutely, I'm going to be watching this uh, today on Apple TV when it drops. It's not playing in theaters in Canada. Uh, you'll have to see it on Apple TV, and people are saying that. But there are just as many people saying, yeah, I will not watch Will Smith in a movie anymore. So um, it's a 50-50 split, as far as I can tell. We'll know on Monday, probably, uh, how many people checked it out. Uh, as far as the movie goes, uh, it is, for better and for worse, a big Will Smith action film. So it is the story of a formerly enslaved man named Whipped Peter. Also, it's the backstory of one of the most famous photographs uh, taken during the American Civil War. Uh, it is uh, the picture of Whipped Peter. It's called The Scourged Back, and it shows him with his back to the camera, and you see uh, the uh, results of years of beatings and whippings on his back and it is one of the pictures that really fueled the abolitionist uh, movement uh, and it serves as kind of the catalyst uh, for uh, this movie. So you have uh, Peter who is uh, taken from his family to work at a Confederate uh, work camp. And while he's there, he starts to hear word that Lincoln has freed the slaves. Of course, there was no talk of that in the Confederate work camp. Uh, so he and a number of other men decide to make an escape. They do through the uh, bayous and the swamps of Louisiana. And that's about all the story I can tell you without giving anything away. But know that this is mostly an action film, mm. and it does have some very tense action moments in it. But I just wish that we got to know more about the character that is at the heart of everything here, and that's Peter. I gave Emancipation three and a half out of five stars, and it's on Apple TV Plus right now. Uh, just quickly then, do you think it's Oscar worthy, and what happens if he is in fact nominated? I think that uh, it is certainly being put up for consideration for Oscars. It's playing uh, only on television, on the streamers uh, in Canada. But in the United States, they're putting it up for uh, big screens because you have to in order for it to be considered for Oscars. Uh, so I have a feeling that it likely might get a best director. It likely might get a best cinematography. But I do not think after his actions of last year that Will Smith will be nominated for best actor. All right, let's talk about the latest offering from Guillermo del Toro. This is Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about this movie? Well, I'll tell you, this is not your parents' Pinocchio. Mm -hmm. uh, in the title, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, should probably give that away. Uh, this is a beautifully animated stop-motion animation version of a very familiar story. And most of the bones of the story that we know, uh, the, the woodcarver Geppetto loses uh, his son, builds a puppet, the puppet comes to life, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, needs to find his soul and needs to go through a number of tests to see if he could become a real boy. This is actually now uh, set between the First and Second World Wars, so there's a, a backdrop of fascism here, uh, some much darker material than we might be used to from the story. But I have to tell you, uh, young kids, maybe 10 and under, probably won't take much from this, but I think anyone from 10 and up can enjoy this with the entire family. The animation is beautiful. The story has lots of, to say about uh, mortality, about uh, becoming a person and becoming uh, responsible uh, for your actions. It's called Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. It's on Netflix right now, and I gave it four to five stars. Okay, the trailer for this next film really wrote me in. I, 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 mm -hmm. I wanted to go and see it. I try not to look at how you rate movies until we're about to what? talk about them. <laughs> I know, because I don't want to be affected. Um, yeah. and, and sorry, we're talking about Empire of Light. This is mm -hmm. uh, from director Sam Mendes. It stars Olivia Coleman as a cinema manager, but you were only so-so on it. 
Yeah, I love her performance. Okay. And I think that uh, she may likely get nominated for maybe an Academy Award or, or a Golden Globe. And if she won, I'd be delighted because she gives the quirkiest, best acceptance speeches of all yes. time. Uh, but in this film, where she plays a troubled woman who is an assistant manager at a beautiful Art Deco cinema on the coast of England, uh, she... Uh, is split into too many uh, divisions. Uh, the movie goes too many different places. When it focuses on the relationship that is central to the story, it works. When it doesn't, it starts to drift a little bit, and it drifts quite a bit. I still gave it three out of five stars because it's a beautiful-looking film directed by Sam Mendes uh, with nice performances. But for me, I just wish it was a bit tighter in story. I just wanted a love story, Richard Krause. <laughs> There's that, but too much else. All right. As well. Thank you so much. We'll <laughs> see you next week. Appreciate it.